With this one, we will be using cardstock to do instead of a, a little section of crystals that would be the center of the, the geode, it will be the cardstock. So I'm just starting with this little square that I printed and I'm gonna go the direction. They're gonna be kind of long triangular shaped. So I'm gonna go the direction that these lines are naturally going. And I'm gonna kind of curve it around and make it a little bit rigid and misshapen, kind of a natural flowing shape. So we've got our pieces here. And we'll measure up our beads. Now for this, you can do one solid color or you can kind of mix the colors. I am going to match somewhat these pinkish colors. So I'm gonna pour almost all of my beads to be colored. I'm gonna leave some clear and the rest will be colored. And I'm gonna be mixing these two colors together. And I'm not mixing like very thoroughly. I'm, I'm gonna let them, some beads be darker, some be lighter, some be more of the apricot color and the other more of the mermaid pink. And I'm not gonna cut the edges of these to fit my circle. I will cut them after they're baked. So I just wanna line these up the way I want them to be. And then I'll flip them both over. You want them face down. And then I have them in the cutter like that. I'm gonna take my clear beads and I'm gonna just put them off to one side. Where they're more gathered over here. And then I'm gonna pour my colored beads on. Pour the rest of my clear over onto the opposite side of where the clear were and then finish filling. Of course, even and smooth everything out. And bake. Now that this one's out and cooled, I'm gonna, just the same way as I always would, pop it out of the cookie cutter. And then we're gonna trim around the edges and trim the excess cardstock off. Decorating this cardstock one is going to be very similar to the last round that we just did. So we're going to go around the edges with the glue, we're going to add a glitter, and then we're going to go around those edges and add another glitter. 
So for this one, I'm gonna be using this really pretty chunky mix. I got this off of Etsy. I don't remember the name of the shop off the top of my head, but I will link it in the description. And then this finer cut glitter that's more of like a champagne color. Now ever so slightly, I'm gonna come in and add a really thin line right around the edge of this glitter. And I'm gonna add my champagne. Now we'll have to let this dry completely before we brush off any of the excess. We have this one that's now dry and we're ready to brush it off. I'm gonna go lightly over the areas. It's, it's probably not as dry as I should let it get before I do this, but I'm gonna lightly go over the, the glitter areas first. And now I'm gonna go over the cardstock areas real quickly. And now over any of the exposed freshy parts. And now that one is completely finished. And this is where it gets a bit more technical. So I'm doing a Texas shape here. And like the one with the hole in it, this one is going to have kind of a crevice for the crystals. And I've just made this little piece out of foil. I've made it really thin because I don't want the hole to come all the way through. This is just gonna be a very shallow hole. So I have shaped this and since I want my Texas to face the correct direction, I'm gonna to have to flip it upside down to put the foil in. So that's how it's gonna look in there. Now we're gonna measure our beads with the foil in there. All right, that should be good. And here's where the planning really has to happen. So I found a picture that I'm using for inspiration on the color and pattern that I want to do for this one. So figuring out how many beads I need for each color sometimes can be a challenge. But what I like to do is I like to look at my shape. And for this one, I know I want a dark blue edge, which is for the shape of the Texas is not going to go around the edge. I wanna follow the line of the foil. 
So the lines are gonna go around like this. And so when we get to the edge of the dark blue, we're really only gonna be cutting into some of these edges here. So I know I don't need a lot, but I'm just gonna take my spoon and like look at the sizes and I roughly estimate. So for the dark blue, I think I'm gonna need about one and a half tablespoons. Now next we're gonna be doing, the next color I'm gonna do is the clear, which is just going to be from the foil to where I expect my dark blue to be. This only has to be a thin layer of clear beads. I don't need it to be clear all the way to the top. So I'm gonna look at that and I'm gonna say probably two to two and a half tablespoons of clear. And that should cut it for those. The rest, I'm going to be doing light blue. Now that I have my colors mixed, I'm gonna start filling. I'm going to start with some of the outer edges, so if the beads roll into those, I don't have to worry about moving them. And then I'm gonna shift them a little bit more to the edge. Following the line of the foil, Just like so. Now I'm gonna come in and put my layer, actually I'm gonna add a few more dark ones over here. Now I'm gonna come in and add my clear beads. sure that there are no beads on the foil or at least as few as possible because we want the center here where the crystals start to be very blue we want a lot of that light blue to show through so now I'm gonna add my light blue beads right over the foil I'm gonna go back in with the dark. Once again, if they fall out of place, you don't, you're not looking for perfect lines. So if it's a little messy, that's not necessarily a bad thing. the rest of my clear beads. And then finish out the design with the light blue. one cold it turned out absolutely beautifully I'm really happy with this one so we're gonna go ahead and pop it out and if you're using a shape like this that you have to turn backward in order to fill 
you have to push it out this way instead of to the front because of this little lip around the cookie cutter. Right, and just like with the other one, we're gonna just pull the edges away from the foil. Now, if you mess the foil up while pulling it out, it is not a big deal. You can always reshape it or just make a new one altogether. So I'm not gonna be all that careful. I will just fix it before the next time I use it. So that's what we have there. Came out so pretty in my opinion. This one, again, I'm going to apply the glue into the crystal crevice. All the way up to the edge. If you go over the edge a little bit, don't be worried about it. Remember, Crystals are naturally imperfect. Geodes are naturally imperfect. Okay, now that I have that nice and coated, I'm going in with a much finer, slightly translucent glitter. Tap it around to make sure it gets into all those little cracks. And pat out the excess. And now set aside to wet dry. We're gonna start by dusting the excess glitter off of this one. I can tell that the glue is not completely dry yet because there's still spots that are more white and opaque than others. That's where the glue is still a little wet. It should eventually dry clear. We're gonna go ahead and dust off the excess, get it cleaned up so we can do the next step. Okay, so using the inspiration picture, I am now gonna add a white and blue paint line. So these bottles, once again, are so great for getting thin lines. It makes it easier to get a good thick color when you use a paintbrush, it gets really thin. You have to go over it time and time again. These are very detailed and it just leaves a very solid, even line. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna follow the shape of the where the foil was, um, leaving enough space to do the white line next to it. That's our first line. And now we're gonna add our white line. This one is just along the edge of the blue line. nice and wet. And I think because I lost a lot of my blue line, I'm going to go ahead and come in here and thicken it up. Okay. 
and we're gonna set it aside and let it dry. So the line in the inspiration picture is not as clean as this one. So I'm gonna come in and add some more paint and give it more of a rough edge. So I know it's not a huge difference, but I did just want to give one more view of it once the paint was dry to show the final result. I think it came out really pretty. Last but definitely not least, I am going to show you how to incorporate the turquoise stones. So for this one, we're doing the round cutter again. And I probably have too many beads here because once we add the stones in, I'll have too many beads, but um, I'm going to take about mm, one and a half tablespoons of beads out to just be clear. These are the ones that are gonna be going over the turquoise stones. Now the rest, I am going to, actually, I'm gonna take another half a tablespoon out for the clear. And now I'm gonna split these in half and I'm gonna do half teal and half white. I'm also using this gold flake for this one. It's not necessary, you don't have to use the gold flake, you can use gold glitter. Um, after the fact, for me, I just, I have it on hand so, I wanted to use it for this one. Now this stuff can be, if you do decide to use this, can be extremely fussy. If you breathe too hard, it will literally fly away. It sticks pretty well to the silicone mat. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of pull small pieces of it off and go in kind of like a line. Now I'm gonna do another line across from it. This will be the little alley that the turquoise stones will be set in. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm just gonna fill this center part with the turquoise stones. Okay, we'll call that right there good. Now I'm going to pour 
some of my clear beads around the edges of the stones. And on top. Now any strays that rolled over to the edge, I'm just gonna kind of reel them back in. Now on this side here, <clears throat> I'm just going to go straight teal beads. Now for this other side, I am going to over pour ever so slightly some clear beads so that they kind of come across the gold line. But I'm leaving the very edge open. This will create a little bit of an ombre appearance when I put the white beads in because I am going to overlap the white beads over these clear ones. So now with the white beads, I'm gonna fill from the edge over. And I don't wanna go too far because I still, for the middle, only want the clear beads. more of the white. And more of the teal. And then just Finish filling in with the clear. Now this one's ready to be baked. Look at how beautiful this one came out. On camera, this looks much more blue, but in person, it is very much teal. It's actually oh, just slightly darker than the stones, but the identical color to them. I wonder if I can get a picture, a more realistic picture of the color and add it in. But let's go ahead and demold. Look at how gorgeous that one is. Unlike the others, we're not adding any glitter to this one because we already have the gold flake. If you do not have gold flake or you didn't use that, now would be the time when you could kind of put an edge of gold glitter. But for this one, I'm just using this white acrylic paint. I've got these little bottles off of Amazon. I'll link them in the description. They're very precise and makes it very easy to do details with. I'm just gonna go around the edge of the gold making a border following the pattern of the gold leaf. and then I'm gonna set it aside to dry. This one is fully dry and aside from adding the string and the bead if you're doing that and trimming these edges up, it's completely done. 